section, but next to it I also built a teepee. And there's just things that um, children can see and then um, think that they can do it too. And then we give them the place and the materials to do it themselves. And, um, and ins we want to do inspire them to be creative and make their own things. <laughs> this is um, a music circle that I made, and it is filled with um, recycled plastic s shakers with beans and rice in them, and sticks, and there is there was like a wooden um, log that we, we used as a drum, and um, this is um, Barbara Kroll's um, granddaughter who was playing with it at the time, and um, I don't know that was just a really cool thing that I got to do because I love music personally, and. Um, it was just really great to see um, all the children playing with something that I've always enjoyed and seeing that maybe I could help them with something like that too. Uh, so this is a children's picnic table that I made. Uh, I made it so that it was three-fourths the scale of like a normal size picnic table um, so that it was especially for kids to use. And um, these are some of the signs that uh, I would burn to show where the, um, uh, the stations that we made were to help the kids find them. This was a joint project between me and Sarah. This is um, a willow dome that we um, harvested the willow from a place in Woodbury. I mean, Maplewood. <laughs> of course, Maplewood, everyone. <laughs> and. Um, so we got all the willow ourselves, and then um, we had help from, what's her name? Phyllis. Phyllis. What's her last name? <laughs> you don't know? Her name is Phyllis, and she is a great person. Um, she helped us harvest the willow, and we built it into this willow dome that um, is Webster. Phyllis Webster. <laughs> um, we built it into this willow dome that um, a lot of the kids enjoyed playing in, because it was like this little like hideaway, and all the kids enjoyed going in it and playing. Um, and then this over here just shows more of the mulching and we made kind of a trail to uh, through the Willow Dome and that it led to the music circle also so inspired kids to just you know <laughs> go around to everything and here's another picture of um, the signs and in the background there's a sand pit that we uh, dug and so it's in ground and um, the kids really enjoy playing in that because they can make whatever they want to in there. Um, also, another project of mine, I did um, some stepping logs that were um, in this, in a, well, there's not a picture of it, but um, I did some stepping logs, which we got all of the wood and the materials that we used, for mine at least, um, over in the forest at, at the Maplewood Nature Center, so we thought that was cool that we could actually use the resources there. Um, also, the overall like idea of our project as well is we really wanted children to see that they don't need the technology that they all um, base their lives around and we base our lives around too. And we thought that like getting started at a younger age by not using the technology as much and getting out in nature and playing could really open up some doors for creativity and a really cool future. Okay, so um, we would really like to thank Barbara Kroll. She was our community advisor and our mentor, and she supported us through the entire project. Um, if it was not for her, we would not be able to do this. Um, let's see, she is the president of the Friends of Maplewood Nature, and she is a wonderful person who could not be here tonight. Because <laughs> of the snow. Um, and then also I want to thank Anne and the staff at the Maplewood Nature Center to help us make it possible to have... Uh, and yes, and Jan is a staff member. And um, just to uh, make it possible for us to get complete our gold award there, and we had a really great time doing it, and it was a really valuable experience for us. Okay, Lauren, sir, if you guys want to come out here. And do you want to just uh, talk briefly about the Nature Center? Is that there? Yeah. Be able to work with these two. Thanks very much. They each put in over a hundred hours of time, as well as their very hardworking parents. We thank them very much too. <laughs> we encourage you all to come out and check it out. It's been really great. We they they also coordinated a special event and um, uh, also helped Barb Kroll write a couple of 
uh, articles that got in the Pioneer Press as well as the review. And after those articles were published every weekend and after school for a month and a half, we were getting regular family visitors. So they, they covered the scope. They also did an evaluation of the site which people are filling out. So they really did do their homework. So thank you very much. camera right there. I want to make sure that your faces are very visible there. And so, um, Maplewood as a city is just very thankful that you chose to come into our community and not only do the projects that you did, but uh, to me it's very important that people uh, have some civic um, pride and um, they're, they're active in various civic events at a younger age. And uh, you have big shoes to fill because we have all us uh, uh, older um, boom generation who will all be dead when you guys are in control and so you'll have a lot of ground to cover. Wonderful. <laughs> and, and so, so anyway, uh, we came up with a resolution which you'll each get a copy of. And in government we speak kind of funny. So it says, in recognition of Girl Scouts Laura Chandler and Sarah Middlestead, whereas the city of Maplewood in wishes to encourage and recognize civic participation by young adults, and whereas Laura Chandler and Sarah Middleschmidt, uh, <laughs> let's see, uh, now I lost my spot, are Girl Scouts who fulfilled the requirements of the Girl Scout Gold Award, the highest and most prestigious award Girl Scouts can receive, and whereas Laura and Sarah attended workshops and researched ideas, uh, and materials for building a natural play playground at the Maplewood Nature Center, and whereas Laura and Sarah devoted over 80 hours each to complete the construction of the natural playground at the Nature Center, and whereas the playground incorporates natural building products and encourages the use of senses to explore nature and have fun. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Will Rosbach, Mayor of Maplewood, as authorized by the Maplewood City Council, do extend the city's appreciation and gratitude for your creativity, citizenship, and hard work to improve our community and provide for years of recreation for children at the Maplewood Nature Center. And so, before saying anything, is there a motion by the City Council to approve so this moved. resolution? Second. So we have a motion by Mr. Nephew, a second by Ms. Juniman. Any discussion? All in favor, please. Oh, J Kathy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Second. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 It's eyes all. We <laughs> all unanimously approve you guys doing a good job. So thank you both <laughs> thank you. very, very much. And thank you to your families also. And here's your resolutions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you of course are welcome to stay for the entire meeting, but if you happen to have a couple other things you have to do, we'll understand that you leave. So, thank you for being here. All right, uh, moving on. The next item that we have tonight is the consent agenda. The consent agenda are, <laughs> are items that the city considers to be routine and are uh, normally passed in one motion. We allow a council member to either take a moment to highlight an item um, or ask a simple question without pulling it from the cassette agenda. If there is a deeper discussion necessary, we would pull it and vote on it separately. So, uh, Mr. Lanis. Just because I see Mr. Foles in the audience, perhaps we can have him highlight briefly number eight. <clears throat> Any other items? Ms. Gentlemen? I think we should very briefly highlight number six. Any other items? <clears throat> uh, we'll start from the top and work down then. Um, so six is approval of Livable Communities Act uh, Housing Action Plan. And so is there someone who could throw a little light on that? <laughs> Mr. Eckstrand. The Met Council does require that the city adopt a, a housing action plan uh, because we are members of the Met Metropolitan Livable Communities Act local housing incentives account. 
it's kind of a mouthful, but it's uh, it's a housing opportunity that the city is part of. We can apply for grants and. Um, but to be part of this program, we need to submit a plan annually, a housing action plan to the city, uh, to the Met Council. Um, the city has just recently adopted a housing action plan as part of our new 2030 comp plan update. And what staff is proposing to do and the HRA has endorsed is to forward that to the Met Council. It is the housing action plan. We just will separate it out as a standalone document and present that to the Met Council for their blessing. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. And, Mr. Mayor. Excuse me? I'd just like to point out that we've been part of this um, Livable Communities Act since the very beginning. Yes, we so have. So we do pay attention to what it takes, and we're doing it in this community. Uh, all right, so then uh, item number eight, Michael Forrest, could you please come forward and tell us how you're going to make this better? Okay. <laughs> 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 Mayor and Council, um, thank you. We basically the item pro, um, before you tonight is having to do with this room and improvements that we're making to this room. We're proposing to make uh, mostly surrounding around the audio that will include new wiring throughout all the DS back into the control room, uh, new mics with stands where you will be able to mute them and unmute them. Um, we will also be replacing quite a bit of um, equipment in the back room, which will allow us to. Um, have more of a, a software-based approach to it where we can set defaults and manage them a little bit easier. Uh, it will also include one of the main reasons why we're doing it is additional speakers in here and basically kind of going back to square one to get a good, um, I guess, solid sound in here without having some of the tinny pops and um, uh, feedback that we've experienced over the last year here. So, uh, and then the last little piece of it, it will also replace the the last remnant of our previous uh, camera system, the document camera. It's relatively quiet right now, but I'm sure you've all heard the uh, the buzzing as as it's been described to me, like it's going to take off effect that it sometimes has. So, that will be replaced also. So, Ms. Schoenman. does it not also say in the report that maybe the image that comes off that will be slightly clearer so yes. not, we're not all going like this all the time. Correct, yes. That is a good improvement. And, and we will, besides that, we will attempt in the future with working with staff who are giving presentations, you've seen some of it in some of our other commissions a lot of um, really using the, the laptop connection and being able to show you um, actual digital images as opposed to having to use the document cameras. So. Any other questions? Thank, Thank you very you. much. Is there a motion then for the consent agenda? I would agenda? move the consent agenda. Second. Ms. Juneman has made a motion. It was seconded by Mr. Copen. Is there any further discussion necessary? All in favor say aye. 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 Eyes all. So that then uh, moves us into our public hearing uh, portion of the meeting. And so the first item there uh, is the Markham Pond Retaining Wall, Project 05-18. And uh, we're scheduled for an assessment hearing that could start at 7, which we're good on, and uh, then a resolution adopting the assessment role. And so let's see. They're all pointing at each other. Mr. Thompson. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, quickly, uh, DeSoto Associates uh, Limited Partnership uh, they own the property at 1650 Beam Avenue. Uh, there was a re uh, failing retaining wall between Markham Pond, the public water body, and the parking lot for the business. And through various negotiations, uh, the project moved forward to repair the wall. Um, a construction contract was let. That project has been completed and the wall repaired. And as part of an agreement signed between the city and DeSoto Associates, uh, DeSoto Associates agreed to a stormwater assessment uh, in an amount just over $31,000. So this is a formality. They have agreed to this assessment and to waive the rights of objection. Uh, so tonight, uh, staff does recommend that you open the hearing for comment and then adopt the attached resolution uh, for adopting uh, the assessment amount. And with that, I can certainly answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions of uh, 
Michael Thompson's or the staff report. 